In this video I'm going to give you a walk around of some of the equipment I use for FPV. I'm going to show you what the tracker is, I'm going to be showing you the Hobby King Bixer, I'm going to be showing you the TBS Cape Arena, I'll show you the Fat Shark goggles, how I use the power systems and the Turnigy 9XR. I'm now going to show you the antenna tracker. This has several components to it. An LCD screen for actually seeing the first person view. We've got the 5.8 duo receiver. We've got an antenna on the top there. And we've got a circular polarized patch antenna there. We've got a 50 kilogram torque 360 degree servo to do the pan. And just a normal standard size servo to do the tilt. Right on this side, you've got the actual tracker itself. So, this is receiving the information from the plane. The signal from the plane comes down through the antenna into the receiver, comes out of one of the audio channels, and it feeds around into the tracker device itself. And you can actually see that we're getting a ridiculous amount of audio level there. Good packets, which is what we need, so we're getting a good signal now. And the rate is 100%, so it's fine. What this does is this actually pans and tilts and follows the plane in the sky, it's sending a signal down, and, and that's based on the GPS coordinates. And this unit will then follow the signal around. Uh, very, very useful and when you don't want to crash. This is the unit doing a self test, so it's doing a tilt and it's doing a pan, checking everything's working. So when the plane's flying around in the sky, this unit can actually follow the plane around in the sky. And what it's doing, it's picking up the GPS coordinates with the GPS module that is on the actual plane itself. Those get sent down through an audio channel and they're picked up in this unit. And the tracker actually makes sense of where they are and points that big patch antenna on the front into the right direction so you can get a very very long range. As well as having the monitor on the tracker system there's also a very very long cable which connects into the fat shark goggles. Now in these goggles as you can see there is a video screen and on this video screen you can also view what is coming out of the actual tracker system so you can see the video crystal clear. The video goggles do also have an antenna on but this is used for more close range FPV. As you can see here we're looking at the LCD screen on the tracking system here just to explain what the on-screen display is. Basically what the on-screen display gives you is, is various things on the screen. It's a little bit like a head-up display in a fighter jet really. Uh, it shows you direction to home there, it shows you the amount of battery you've used, how many amps it's using, um, it shows you your GPS coordinates, what mode you're in, uh, height, speed, distance from home is there, uh, actual distance is there, and, and various other options. Time is also displayed up there, flight time. Um, there's also a compass just in the middle there as well. Really handy to have one of these on if you are planning on doing long distance or you're not quite sure of the area. The, the, I mean, the, the arrow points you back to where you need to be going. Uh, you've got a compass there so you know where you're going as well, direction. Very handy. It also obviously tells you how much battery you've got left. Now, like I say, I do fly the, the TBS Cape, Cape Arena without the uh, OSD on it. So basically it's a matter of picking up your waypoints as you take off, having a good look around, making sure you can identify some features around where you've taken off from and, and kind of remember the direction you're coming in or, or going to, should I say. That's the best bit of advice I can give you for that. Don't get lost. Let's have a look at the Hobby King Bixer that I fly. This is a nice cheap aircraft, very stable and is capable of some absolutely fantastic FPV if you set it up right. On this particular model I've done the motor upgrade that's a 2826 and it's a 2200 kilovolt motor with a 5x5 prop in it. Also done a little upgrade I put these little hooks on the wing here to get rid of the screws that go in here and here basically they're just an absolute faff to get in. The uh, elastic band gives it a little bit of uh, spring should you have a bit of a, let's say, hairy landing. 
at the back of the plane there you can see these two things coming out and these are the antenna for the UHF receiver. Down at the front business end this is where all the stuff's at. Inside here we've got the current sensor and right down in the bowels of it in here we've got an FY41 AP autopilot. Look at the top there's a GPS receiver for that. The autopilot's used for stabilisation, it's used for return to home and auto circling in the GPS unit lets the autopilot know where it is in the sky at all times. So this is the front of the plane with the, the equipment attached. We've got the FPV camera at the front, this is what I see through, so this is what the goggles are attached to. We've got a GoPro, that's used for recording the flight, some HD video. We've got the video transmitter, we've got the antenna, we've also got another small GPS module here and this is called the Easy Tiny Telemetry. What this does is it sends down telemetry data through the audio channels of the transmitter here and that video transmitter sends the audio down to the tracker and the tracker makes sense of where that GPS unit is and points the antenna towards this aircraft. This unit on this side is an airspeed sensor that's used by the FY41 to determine how fast the plane is going. Inside the front of the plane there's loads of room so at the moment there's a single 2200 milliampere three cell battery in there. That's enough to power this plane for between 10 and 15 minutes depending on flying style. If you wanted to extend the flying of this plane, you can use a wire lead like that. And you can connect two batteries together to pretty much double the capacity of the batteries. Now as you can see with two batteries in the front of this plane it is a bit of a tight squeeze and obviously it is going to shift the centre of gravity forward quite a bit on the aircraft. I've found however that the plane still flies fine um, even though the CRG has moved forward. Um, you just need to put a few clicks of up trip in um, to actually make it fly straight and level. This is a Turnergy 9XR that I used to fly the aircraft. Um, as you'll probably notice my throttle's on the wrong side compared to most people. It's the way I've uh, learned to fly and the way I've stuck with it. I find it a little bit smoother having the Alon and the elevator on two different sticks. On the back of my transmitter, I've got the Easy UHF transmitter. That's transmitting a UHF radio signal rather than the 2.4 gigahertz signal. Uh, you are potentially able to get a lot longer range using this uh, type of setup. My UHF receiver is pretty much just under the middle of the aircraft, I would say. I would say it's about there. In the aircraft there's a little hatch there and the UHF receiver is just in front of that little hatch there. Uh, that receiver's then got some long antenna that come to the rear of the aircraft. And those are on that side and that side. They're classed as diversity receiver diversity as it's got two different antenna that will pick up the strongest signals you're flying. Uh, really good obviously is that the plane will bank in flight um, and it, there's a chance of it dropping the signal on either aerial. The chances are that it'll probably pick it up on the other one. The FY41 has several modes. We've got an RC mode where the plane will fly just as normal. We can flick a switch plane is now stabilized so when I move the plane itself it actually counteracts with the gyros inside the FY41 to keep the plane straight and level which is great if you want to go long distance you literally just uh, flip the stabilization on and you can even just sit back and relax and enjoy the view out of the FPV camera in front. We've also got on this switch I've got return to home if the aircraft gets lost or I lose contact with the aircraft I can flick that down and it will return the aircraft to home. I've also got auto circling mode so I can flick that up to the plane in a circle in a 50 meter radius circle. I've also set a fail safe on the Easy UHF you can set that just by pressing that black button on the back there and I've set that for half throttle and return to home so if the plane actually goes out of range as well it'll uh, set it at half on it'll flip return to home and all being well the plane will return back to me. The last plane to check out is a TVS Cape Arena. This is a great absolutely fantastic flying wing it's fairly small um, 
I'm flying this on a single two cell 3300 milliampere battery. Got the FPV camera in the front, the GoPro in the front, and it's got the stock TBS speed controller, the stock TBS motor. Uh, it's got the same as I came with the TBS as well, standard bag on servos. In this, I've got a 600 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz VTX, I've got the tiny telemetry in there, and I've got the easy UHF in there. That's just that's not diverse, that's just a single antenna. Very easy to fly wing, it's very stable and I've had it very high and it goes very far indeed. Uh, about 25 minutes flight time on the battery depending on your flying style. I do fly this wing with no OSD, the camera is direct feed into the video transmitter which then transmits down. I can track it with the tracking system using the tiny telemetry there, but there is no on screen display. So that's the setup. It's, uh, Fairly uh, good setup. I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. It all seems to be working really well. And uh, well, if you ask my wife, 